Hi everyone. So yesterday I did a reading about the timeline merge that's coming up, um, also the eclipse, the Mercury retrograde, uh, the solar flares that are coming up. There's, there's lots of different energies that are at play. So there's this energy of chaos, but also truth. Um, like shit is going to hit the fan. The truth is going to be revealed not only about yourself, but about people in your life. I went into more of what you could expect in that that video that I posted last night, but I wanted to follow up because I'm getting this energy that with the, with the you know current astrological factors that are at play, I think some people are going to be experiencing some pretty bad karma, and I feel like some of them are are not going to be in a great place mentally, and some people might take it out on you. There's a warning I'm getting to set strong boundaries and not let anyone use you as a punching bag. Because um, the energy I'm getting is that someone might want to project their their insecurities or the bad karma they're facing, they might want to project that energy onto you. They're not going to want to face it. They're going to want to blame you for it for some reason. Some may even go as far as trying to spread rumors about you, and I'll probably go into that in a separate video at some point in the near future. But I feel like you don't need to worry because I feel like if they do spread rumors, just you staying in your truth, you being your authentic self, um, I think the truth will be revealed to everyone around them. I, I don't think that the rumors are going to stick. I think that they're going to either be called out and cleared up on the spot or shortly after that. So I, I wouldn't worry too much about rumors with this truth energy that's coming through. I feel like any rumors, any lies that they try to spread, it's just going to backfire on them. Now, the person, okay, for this energy group, the person I'm picking up on that might want to use you as a scapegoat, as a punching bag, it's going to be different for everyone. For someone I'm hearing, it's your sister. That might resonate for someone specifically. Um, I'm getting like a younger sister vibe, um, kind of spoiled brat sort of vibe is what I'm feeling. So watch out for that. But for others of you, you know, take it as it resonates. This could be a, a, a family member, a friend. This could be an ex, a current partner, just however it fits. But there's this energy for if you're in this collective, if you're in this specific energy group, there's this energy of someone around you dealing with bad karma and wanting to use you as a punching bag, wanting to take out their their frustration, their anger, you know, hitting rock bottom and wanting to blame you for it. So you really need to just be mindful of people sending you the evil eye right now or spreading rumors or, um, you know, just, just trying to bring you down in any way, basically. Yeah. Um, I, I do want to say quickly before I pull cards as well, that a lot of people, a lot of people misunderstand karma. A lot of people think that karma is like punishment. You know, the universe is pissed off. And don't get me wrong. I mean, your spirit guides do get angry if someone wrongs you. Like they do have your back. But more often than not, karma is really just the universe, you know, the higher ups, your spirit guides balancing things. So let's say, for example, you bullied homeless people in your past life, you might end up being homeless this life, or it could be, you know, even bullying homeless people in, in this lifetime, you might end up being homeless. And it's not the universe trying to get back at you. The universe doesn't have some toxic hidden agenda. It's not like that. It's, it's, it's more just this balancing energy where it's like you, it's about learning empathy. You know, it's, it's like you might have to be homeless for a while to understand what homeless people are facing, to understand what that kind of despair feels like. That way you develop that empathy and that understanding for homeless people. You know what I mean? That's just one example of many. But but again, it's it's not punishment. It's it's just it's just balancing. It's just it's it's you know, helping you open your mind up, helping you see multiple perspectives. Um and I feel like for the viewers on my channel, I feel like you guys are open-minded enough that you want to see multiple perspectives. You want to, you know, most of you already have that empathy, but if you don't already have that empathy, I feel like you want to develop that empathy. But the people that I'm picking up on that might want to use you as a punching bag, it's like they, they don't understand that process. 
they don't understand. It's like when their mind is opening up and they're being shown different perspectives, they get defensive. Um, for this energy group, it's like they're very stuck in their ways. They're very stuck. They have like this tunnel vision. Um, they have a very, you know, limited perspective. So when the universe tries to balance out the karma and show them how other people might think, how other people might feel, you know, they try to put them, try to put this person in another person's shoes. This person gets very defensive. They, they cling on to their comfort zone. For some of them, I'm almost feeling this energy like where they feel like there's a sense of fear and anxiety that I'm getting from this group where it's almost like they feel like if they're pushed out of their comfort zone and they're exposed to multiple perspectives, if they face that karma, if they um, if they put themselves in someone else's shoes, it's almost like there's this this side of themselves that they've been running from, this vulnerable loving side of themselves and they're they're afraid of of being exposed they're afraid of being forced to get back in touch with that vulnerable side of themselves um but it looks like this is happening whether they like it or not they can choose to do it the easy way or the hard way but it is happening um yeah yeah Bear with me, guys, because when I talk, I'm channeling. So I'm not just, you know, giving my opinion and just saying random shit. Like, this is me channeling. This is me feeling the energy, tuning in. Um, the cards are just a tool that helps me with that. But I'm, I'm you know, seeing what else I can feel off this here. Yeah, it's just, I guess just get the sense of anxiety. Like, they feel like something bad happens. It's kind of the, the visuals that I'm getting in my mind's eye and just the energy I'm feeling off this person. It's almost like... Like they feel like something bad just happens to them if they allow themselves to see multiple perspectives. It's like they've been so stubborn. And it's like they want that sense of control. Hmm. I almost feel like I feel a sense of anxiety, but I almost feel like they're going to recognize that the more you open up to who you truly are, the more you're your true self, the more you get in touch with all aspects of yourself, you know, those vulnerable emotional sides of you that you've suppressed, the darker parts of you, the lighter parts of you, all of it, the more that you just embrace who, who you truly are, the more control that you actually have. So it's almost like for them, it's like they haven't really had this control. They've almost been stagnant, um, they've been trying to control everything, but it's, it's almost like they've just had this illusion of control and their manifestations are not coming in because they're in this stagnant energy. So it's like nothing is able, it's like they, they get little bits and pieces of their manifestations, but they're not manifesting as much as they could if they expanded their horizons. Um, it kind of reminds me of, and I don't want to get too much into this person because, I mean, this was supposed to be mostly a warning for you guys about not being used as a punching bag. But I'm just, you know, I'm just going to tune into their energy really quick and then we'll pull some more cards and see what else the warnings want us, what, what other warnings we have here. But um, it reminds me of this dream that I had uh, years and years ago where there was a seal that was in this bathtub and it jumped out and I was trying to take it to the ocean. And I was like, you can be in the ocean. Like you have like a whole world to explore. Like you have your, your seal friends in the ocean, like go out and, and have fun. And, and, you know, why would you want to live in a bathtub? And I tried to take the seal to the ocean and it ran right back to the bathtub because that was all that it was familiar with. That was its comfort zone. And I think at the end of the dream, I finally got the seal to, you know, wake up and kind of recognize like, hey, you can be in the ocean. You don't have to be in the bathtub anymore. You know, it might feel safer, but your 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 life is fading away. Like there's nothing there for you. Um, and I feel like these people are going to have similar epiphanies where at first, they're going to kind of panic about, you know, truth being revealed about themselves and about others around them. They're going to panic about shit hitting the fan, whatever drama might be unfolding over the next few weeks. They're going to be panicking about, you know, being that seal that's forced into the ocean when they've spent their, their lives in this little bathtub. Um, it's like, they're not going to be used to it. They're going to, they're going to want to go back to that control. They're going to want to, they don't want to be every aspect of themselves. They want to limit how they interact with people. They want to present a certain image to people. They want people's approval. 
So I think there's going to be almost this sense of like confusion and fear and uncertainty at first. But I, I honestly really feel like once this person gets into this unfamiliar energy and they start seeing other perspectives, um, it's, it's going to end up making this person really happy, actually, because it's like, they're going to see that there's a whole new world out there that they just were completely unaware of. Um, it's like there's going to they're going to see opportunities to to manifest what they want that they didn't have before when they were in that stagnant energy. And it's like things are just really going to open up for them. And I think they're also going to recognize, like I said, you know, them limiting who they are, them, you know, putting all these walls up, them only wanting to to be to present themselves a certain way. You know, it gave them the illusion of control, but I think they're going to start recognizing that they never really had control. They were actually in the dark. They were stagnant. They had absolutely no control. Um, but once they open up their mind, once they see these different perspectives, once they allow their soul to to grow, to evolve, to expand their horizons, um, it's, it's almost like they're going to have a new sense of control and it's actually going to be genuine control. Um, and they're going to be much more powerful because they're embracing all aspects of who they are, the darkness, the light, the vulnerable sides. It's like all of that is merging and coming into, into, into one being. Um, and so they're going to have more power than ever. Uh, it, it always like baffles me, you know, with people when they, um, when they're afraid to develop their, their third eye, their intuition, their psychic abilities or manifestation, like when people are afraid of that, when they stay in this little box because they want control over things, I'm like, that, that makes no sense to me because I'm like, if your third eye isn't open, if you're not intuitive, then you're in the dark. You don't know what's going on around you. You don't know how to read the people around you. You don't know what's coming. It's like, it's the opposite of control. But when you develop your intuition, you have more control than ever because you know yourself, you know the people around you, 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 you know what I mean? Like you're just listening to your intuition. Like you have more power and control than ever. So anyway, I think it's going to be kind of a chaotic process for these people, but I think that they are going to start seeing things differently and they are going to step into their power ultimately even if it's kind of a chaotic process. Um, let's see. What else did I want to say about that? Yeah, it's kind of that same energy I was getting yesterday in that video where I was like, you know, this this eclipse, Mercury retrograde is not fucking around. It's you either go along with these changes, you go with the flow or you get dragged it's, you know, they can do this the hard way or the easy way. It's kind of the same with karma too, where it's like karma would prefer, you know, karma is not about punishment. Like I said, it's like karma would prefer to teach people in a gentle way. You know, if, if you're on the street and a homeless person's asking you for money and just showing them basic kindness, even if you don't have any money to give, just acknowledging them as a person who is in pain. Um, just having that empathy. It's like you can learn that lesson in subtle ways. But if you don't, if you keep bullying homeless people, you close your mind, you just make false assumptions about them, eventually you you might end up being homeless yourself. That, you know, karma tried to teach you in a gentle way, but you, you didn't want to learn that way. And it's only going to try so many times before you get, you know, hit, you know, with rock bottom with these really tough karmic lessons. So, you know, with karma, it's really up to you if you learn in a gentle way or a hard way. Um, and I'm getting for this group, it's like they're they're having to learn these things in a hard way. And for whatever reason, I feel like they're going to be blaming you for that. I just keep getting they're going to want to use you as a punching bag. Hmm. Let's see. What's the warning here? Tell me more about this. Four of Cups, Ace of Swords. Yeah, they've been stagnant and there's some kind of really harsh truth that's coming in here, Ace of Swords, that's shaking that up. They've been stagnant. They've been doing the same shit, same routine, same patterns, same mentality for too long. It's being shaken up with the Ace of Swords. Tell me about this. Tell me about this. Queen of Pentacles, Three of Cups. The Tower. Ooh. Hmm. I'm seeing there could be some drama at like an event or a social gathering with the three of cubs because that's like celebrations, 
that's events. It could be involving a female earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, or someone with heavy earth placements in their chart. It doesn't have to be, though. But um, there's something here where shit's just getting shaken up. Tell me more about this. King of Wands, the world. Page of Pentacles. Tell me more about this karma. Four of Wands, Ten of Swords. Hmm. For some, I realize that you, I, for some, I feel like that you've made them realize certain things about yourself. And so that's why they're blaming you. For others, it's like there's this false foundation that's being shaken up. There's this Ten of Swords. Let's see. King of Wands, the world. The Page of Pentacles. Tell me more about this. The world, the Page of Pentacles, and the Four of Wands. What is this trying to tell me here? The Devil. The Empress. Death. The Queen of Wands, the King of Swords, the Three of Swords. I had to pause it to like get a grasp on the energy. How do I explain this? It's almost because I'm as a psychic, I always read the cards differently. I mean, they have like the same general meaning, but sometimes I'll look at them and I'll feel a certain vibe off them. And with the world and the and the page of pentacles here, the way that she's looking, this this character is like looking and trying to manifest something. I almost feel it's like they're intimidated by your power. They're intimidated by your light, by your truth. You're coming up male or female, doesn't whatever, whether you're male or female, you're coming up as the Empress and the Queen of Wands. And they're coming up as a King of Swords energy. I almost get that they have this illusion that they built. So they had this, you know, sort of false sense of control. They had this, um, how do I explain? I'm almost hearing like a five-year plan or they had like these certain ideas in mind. Like I need to, I've, I've already, you know, dealt with all my karmic lessons. I'm good. I'm happy where I'm at. Or, um, you know, I need to work on myself, but I need to do these specific things. And I need to, um, I need to get people to like me more. And I need to, it's like almost like surface level goals. Or it's like they just had these certain ideas when it comes to karma, when it comes to their their ideals, their goals. Um, and I, I feel, again, I feel like it was like this illusion of control, though. It's like they weren't, uh, they weren't really fully opening themselves up. You know, it, it's... <laughs> It, it feels like that got shaken up. Like they have this false sense of peace. Like I'm going to have this peace if I can't accomplish these surface level things or, you know, um, they wanted to work on their physical appearance and they didn't, they wanted to ignore whatever they needed to deal with mentally or emotionally. And then you came along and you, you shoved that right in their face. So the universe that your, their spirit guides are kind of shoving that right in their face. Like, Hey, you need to work on, these deeper ideals, not just surface level goals, but, you know, empathy, intuition, um, truth, honesty, like those, you know, deeper ideals. And so it's almost like they have this false foundation, this false sense of peace and 10 of swords. I feel like that just ended. And I feel like they're almost blaming you for shaking things up when in reality, I mean, you might've helped with that, but it's also their spirit guides are shaking things up. I feel like there's a sense of you being very powerful. It's like there's no, like the the devil energy, like their um, maybe tactics that they worked to get people's attention in the past. It doesn't work on you because you're the empress. Now, you might love this person. You might care about this person, but they have to come correct. You're as the Empress and the Queen of Wands, you're standing, you can see the energy of these cards, like this person's very powerful. And they're coming in with this devil energy, um, again, maybe trying to 
make you jealous, play mind games. Maybe they're trying to get your attention in certain ways. They're trying to trigger you or hurt you or upset you in certain ways. And maybe that worked. Maybe those patterns worked with people in the past, but it doesn't work with you. And so I think they're getting frustrated and upset because they're realizing that you are the empress. You are extremely powerful. You are not coming down off your throne to play those petty games with them. Regardless of how you feel about them, you could be completely deeply in love with this person. You're still not going to come down off your throne to deal with those games. You're, it's like you're staying on this higher vibration and you're like, no, I'm not, we're not doing that petty shit. Like you can come take the throne next to me and we can be a power couple or you can keep going in circles being in this low vibration playing these little petty games with yourself but you're not you see her she's not male or female it's like she's not looking at that she's she's just chilling she's relaxing she's like no you're not going to get a reaction out of me doing shit like that you're not going to get my attention doing shit like that the empress is very confident she knows ex he or she this could be for a man take it as it resonates but the empress knows exactly what they deserve you know, the empress is well aware she is she's not going to lower those boundaries. She's not going to tolerate petty mind games. Um, and so I think that's another thing that's almost like pissing them off and kind of frustrating this person is just recognizing that you're staying on their throne on your throne and you're basically staying like you're, you're basically telling this person like, hey, I love you or, or hey, I care about you. You need to, you know, work on these things. You need to develop that empathy, that intuition. You, you need to openly communicate. You need to be honest. You need to have integrity. You need to step up and come to that higher vibration and take the throne next to me so we can be a power couple and we can support each other and we can be gentle with each other. But you cannot expect an empress to get off her throne and entertain the devil energy and and, you know, deal with someone who's emotionally unavailable or being petty or playing games or trying to trigger her. Like, you know, it. They're, it's like they're getting frustrated and upset that they're not getting a reaction from you. Because I think it's also triggering their insecurities as well because they're like, oh shit, like this person's different. Like if I want this person's attention, I can't pull them into this devil energy with me into this lower vibration I'm actually going to have to step up and be the emperor. I'm going to have to step up and match that energy. I'm going to have to openly, honestly communicate. I'm going to have to be emotionally available. I'm going to have to make an actual effort to get this person's attention. Because, you know, the empress is not someone that wants what she can't have. Like, she's she's not in high school. She's not doing that shit. If a man ignores her, she's going to ignore him back. Um, if a man's not giving her attention, she's going to be like, okay, well, that's, that's your loss. Like, I don't know what's wrong with you. You should see what's right in front of your face. You know, like she's, she's not going to chase a man. The empress does not chase, um, regardless of how she feels. It's not about a lack of love. Like I said, this empress could be completely in love with this man. She could be completely vulnerable with him, completely open. She could long for him, but you know, she still knows that if he really wants her, he's going to step up and he's going to come get her. He's going to match that energy. He's going to, you know, he's going to be the emperor. He's going to match that. Um, he's going to show her he cares. He's going to make that effort. And um, yeah, I feel like almost like it's, it triggers this person's insecurities. Because they're like, why are you not like chasing me like other women, other women would? Or why are you not being triggered like the way I've been able to trigger other people in the past? Or it's like they get in their head and they're like, well, what if I'm not able to be the emperor? What if this? What if that? But you know, as the empress, you already know this person is capable of being the emperor. It just depends on how bad they want it, how bad they want you. With the death, it's like there's this transformation that you're bringing in. They're responding to your power by being guarded, King of Swords. Why the Three of Swords? Three of Swords is about heartbreak. Why are they why are they responding to your power by being guarded like that? Ace of Wands, Six of Wands. Six of Swords. Cherry, a page once. Some of them are worried that you're moving on from them. That's not the case. There could have been like a miscommunication or something. 
So I think by being the Empress and the Queen of Wands, I think you were trying to tell this person like, hey, I care about you. Like, I love you. Or at least I at least care about you. Like, you're important to me. Like, step up and be the Emperor. Like, I see good in you. I think that you, you know, you could do better. Um, I want open communication with you. I want something stable with you. I want us to work through this together. I want something real here. Um, it's like you presented a challenge, but you presented a challenge in a positive way where you're like, you know, like, like, step up, like, you know, be with me. Um, I think there is mutual love here, but for whatever reason, I feel like they took that challenge in a negative light. Like they took it as rejection somehow is what I'm feeling. Um, I'm not hundred percent sure why it's interesting. It's almost like you stepped into your power more and they just, they kind of felt insecure or they felt like they wouldn't be good enough for you. Or it's like, maybe you were challenging them to work on themselves and instead of realizing that that you were trying to challenge them to work on themselves, they just took it as, oh, I'm not good enough for her as I am, or she feels like she's better off without me, or she doesn't need me anymore. It's like, I, I feel like this person overthought something. Like they got with the King of Swords, they got in their head about something. They misinterpreted something. Um... Because they felt like you were telling them that you you feel like you'll have more victory if you move on from them. And like I said, that's not the case. That's not what you were saying. You were actually expressing love and trying to say like, hey, let's let's get on this higher timeline or let's let's work through things together. Like I do want to be with you. But maybe you just had to, you know, maybe you maybe you had some things that you needed to say or whatever, but it's like <sighs> hmm. Tell me more about this. It's like, I just keep getting they felt rejected, but you weren't rejecting them. You weren't, you being in your power or you being, you being this empress, this queen of wands, you being headstrong or whatever it is that you did or said, you, you were not rejecting them. You were actually doing the opposite of rejecting them. You were trying to say, hey, come with me, come be with me, evolve with me. Um, like work through things with me you know what I mean like they 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 somehow got insecure and misinterpreted that I'm hearing that audio I think it's audio slave you gave me a life now show me how to live For some, I feel like they could be frustrated and angry at you because it's like they feel like you just put all this shit on them, but they feel like they don't know where to go next. For like for some, it's like, like I said, they misinterpreted something. Um, for some, it's almost like they feel like like you told them what you want or need in the connection or you told them like what you're looking for. But then it's it's almost like they feel like rejected by you. So they're like, well, like, how dare she? Like, she told me what she needs, but she didn't tell me how to do that or, or what to do next. Like, they feel kind of a little bit like lost or left in the dark. Um, hmm. This is interesting. So it's almost like they blame you for all these big changes. They're almost like all these changes are coming up and they have to face them. It's their own karma. Um, it's the universe pushing them to be the best version of themselves, to get in touch with their soul, to to dig deeper, to be their true authentic self. And that's happening with or without you in the picture. But for some, they're going to blame you for it. They don't realize that there's spirit guides around them that are working with them on this. It's not just all your fault. Even if you triggered them, there's still spirit guides that are adamantly like pushing them to to evolve and to make these changes and to um to have the life that they want to manifest basically um but yeah for some it's like they want to blame you for the changes that are coming into their life 
Like they don't want to, it's like they're being forced to look in the mirror and take accountability and they're not wanting to do that. So they're wanting to blame you instead. And honestly, it's going to backfire on them. Like the more that they try to blame you or spread rumors about you or, you know, not take accountability, the more they're going to be exposed for doing that. Like if they try to lie about you or spread rumors to try to, you know, take the, the focus off themselves, it's actually going to come back on them and people are going to see that you're a good person. They're going to see the truth about you. And this person is going to look bad. They're going to look like a liar. They're going to look like, cause they are, if they are lying or spreading rumors, you know, like they're going to be exposed on the spot, if not shortly after, like, it's not like taking the intention, like it's like they're being forced to look in the mirror and they're going to want to take the attention off themselves and it's not going to work. And the more they try to take the attention off themselves, the more the attention is going to be brought back to them. You know, like if they try to make you look stupid or they try to make you look bad or they try to make you look like all the things that, you know, maybe they are or that they've been they've been projecting on you or whatever. Like I said, it's going to come back on them and like they're. It, people are just going to know like right away that they're not telling the truth or they're just going to look stupid right away. Like no one's going to believe the shit they're saying about you. You know what I mean? Like the truth is just going to be revealed and they're going to be forced to look in the mirror even more than before. Like they, they can choose how gentle or how harsh this process is. Tell me more about this. Yeah, they're only going to have this new start that they've been wanting to manifest when they decide to step up and be the emperor. When they stop making excuses and being the king of swords or getting in their head or sabotaging or, you know, telling themselves that they're not strong enough to match your energy or they, you know, blaming other people for where they're at or whatever. The only the only way they're really going to get out of this is when they actually embody that emperor energy and they step into their true power and they accept all aspects of themselves when they start being genuine, honest, real, honest with themselves, honest with the people around them, when they start living with more integrity, more empathy, more intuition, really embracing who they truly are in all aspects, really start being the emperor. The emperor is, is all four kings combined. It's the king of pentacles, wands, cups, swords, you know, all aspects of their being. When they start being their true authentic selves on all levels, you know, and that's, again, that's accepting their darkness, accepting their light, accepting their vulnerabilities, their fears, like just really embracing themselves as they are, both their weaknesses and their strengths, really being honest with themselves. Um, and, you know, working on whatever they need to work on, um, that's that's the only time that they're going to have this new start that they're wanting with the fool card strength yeah justice nine of pentacles abundance yeah i think they're going to look at things differently too when that happens because I think they're going to start being a more evolved version of themselves. They're really going to start stepping into their power here with the strength and the justice card and the emperor. Nine of Pentacles. It's someone who's abundant, but it's also someone that has everything except for love. Because the Nine of Pentacles is a card about being single. It's like this person's like financially abundant. You know, they're they're their goals are manifesting. So I almost feel like when this person steps into their power, it's like the things that they've been manifesting are going to start coming in quickly. Um, cause they've been putting all the energy, all the work into manifesting things, but they couldn't manifest from that lower vibration from not accepting all aspects of themselves. But when they do, I feel like they're going to start manifesting things all at once or it's going to be justice. So it's like a lot of like, like, you know, money, career, uh, projects, goals, whatever it is. It's like, those things are going to start manifesting pretty quickly for them once they step into that emperor energy. But I feel like they might end up having, um, It's like they're going to have this new perspective. You know what I mean? Like they're going to be in their power, but they're going to have this new perspective about, you know, miscommunication or arguments or just recognizing. It's like these two people both want to be in the same room. They both want to be close to each other, but they're not talking. But it's like they don't want to be away from each other. You know, the love is there. And I feel like they're going to have like epiphanies about that. They're going to have um, anxieties about that.
yeah, they're going to start using their intuition and they're going to want a more equal give and take with you, I feel. I think it's just kind of that process of, you know, in the meantime, while they're going through this process, because some are going to fight it more than others, some are going to fight that, you know, like I said, it's like they're going to be forced to look in the mirror and they're going to want to blame everyone but themselves or they're going to want to blame you and use you as a punching bag because, you know, they might feel like you brought about these changes or um, they might be facing bad karma and they might, for whatever reason, blame you for it or there might just be things that are like coming back on them. Um, and so I feel like they might get in their head about it. Like they're going to want a scapegoat and you're going to have to really kind of stay strong through that process. And, you know, as the empress staying on your throne and not, not dealing with those petty games. And that's part of what leads to this transformation for this person too. Like I said, because they're going to try to be in that devil energy. They're going to try to get your attention in all those toxic ways that might've worked with other people. And they're going to recognize finally, like, like it's going to like kind of baffle them at first. Like, why doesn't it work on this person? Like it worked on everyone else. Well, it's like, you're an empress. It's not going to work on an empress. You know, like I was saying with an empress, it's like, she knows he or she knows what they deserve. Um, you have to come correct with an empress. You have to step up. You have to communicate with them. You have to make gestures. You have to make romantic gestures. You have to show interest. You have to court them. You have to like, you know, really show that interest in them, really put that effort in them, you know, playing hard to get or making them jealous or doing petty shit. It's just going to turn an empress off. She's just going to be like, oh no, like I, regardless of how I feel for you, I know I don't deserve that shit. Like, um, and they're going to, they're going to recognize that eventually. They're going to recognize that they have to have a new approach when it comes to you if they want your attention back. And you could be thinking about them all the time. You might be completely in love with this person, but you're not going to, in the physical world at least, you're not going to really give them that attention if they're trying to go about it the wrong ways, getting that attention. Um, but yeah, stay in your power as this person is going through this transformation. Um, don't Don't let them get under your skin and trigger you. Um, again, they're very intimidated by how powerful and how strong you are with the Empress and the Queen of Wands here. It, it's like they're, they're not feeling like they're on your level. So they're wanting to pull you back down to their level, but you need to stay at the level you're at and they need to come up and meet you at your level instead of you going down to their level. You know what I mean? Like they need to they need to step up. They need to develop that empathy. They need to develop that that open-minded perspective seeing other perspectives basically um but yeah I think they're going to start seeing things differently they're also going to start recognizing that you were never rejecting them you this entire time despite how powerful you may be you you've just been supporting them you've been loving them you've been there the entire time you know like you've always had this person's back you've always had this person's best interest um I think this person's going to really recognize that. They're going to recognize where the miscommunication was, um, what can be done differently. I think it's going to give them anxiety, maybe even insomnia. But I think they're going to want to wrap that cycle of miscommunication or no communication up. They're going to want to use their intuition more. And they're going to want to come through with this more balanced energy with the Six of Pentacles. They might even make you some, for some of you, not for all of you, but for some, they might make you some kind of offer, um, like offering to help you with a project, or they might offer to help you with something financially, or they might like give you a job offer, or some kind of um, offer that has to do with like finances or, or hobbies or the material world. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's important more than ever to stay in your power. And you're setting the example for them as well. You're setting the example. Um, they're going to need to recognize that you were not rejecting them, that that's their own insecurities, that's their own fears, their own delusions talking. I don't want to say delusions, but it's like their fears and insecurities almost. It's like it, it's, it, it paints a false picture. You know what I mean? Like their insecurities get the best of them and they don't see things as they truly are. So they might end up making false assumptions about you or about other people. 
I think as they go through this transformation, they're going to be like, they're going to see it differently. They're going to start understanding that you were not rejecting them, that you actually always had love for them. You always had your back. You've been there for them. Like they're going to start recognizing things. They're going to have this, this epiphany, this clear, this clarity. Um, tell me more about this. Yeah, because I feel like you still want to be with this person. You want, you're you're hoping for them to come get you. You're hoping for them to step up and match your energy and, and be with you and come get you, you know? Um, tell me more about this. For some, it's like they felt like it was too good to be true, like true love was right in front of their face with the Ten of Cups, but they got lost in their head with the Seven of Cups, illusion, multiple choices, not knowing what's what, um, Nine of Wands, assuming everything has to be a battle, like this, you know, nothing could possibly just be this easy. Um, but I think that's their own insecurities and their fears that they're going to need to work through. And of course, you guys can work through those together if they're openly communicating with you on those things. But for a lot of them, they're probably not going to be honest about those things. So it's going to end up being something they work through on their own because they might not come forward and tell you this stuff. But it's like they just they don't think that anything in life could come that easily, basically. And you guys might even have the same fears, the same abandonment issues, the same insecurities. Eight of Swords, Two of Pentacles, the Hierophant. Some of them are like afraid of being trapped in a commitment. Like they they want a commitment, they want that true love, but they're afraid of like losing themselves to it or they're afraid of like um being tricked into something and then being stuck being trapped like with the eight of swords energy um like something seeming too good to be true and then they just they lose themselves in it and they're just they're just stuck they, they've been afraid of that two of cups four of pentacles yeah it's like they've been holding on to their comfort zone okay Let's wrap this reading up though. What is, okay, so we know that you need to stay in your power. This person needs to start recognizing that you do love them, that you were not rejecting them. You were basically just calling them to be the emperor. You were basically just saying, hey, step up. You can do better than this. You need to step up. I'm not being treated like this. I don't care how I feel about you. Like you, you need to, if you want me around, you need to treat me a lot better. Um, like you you see the best in this person what else what, let's wrap this up so what else do we need to know about this transformation this person's going through the star hope healing five of pentacles king of cups Knight of Wands, Knight of Swords, the Hanged Man. I feel like they associate being the King of Cups with being left out in the cold, being abandoned, but that's going to have to, they're going to have to change their perspective on that and heal that, heal those abandonment issues. I mean, you can only heal abandonment issues to so, so much, like that's always kind of there. But they need to recognize that they can be the king of cubs without being abandoned. You know, they can be their true selves without being abandoned. It's not, it's not always a power struggle. It's not always a game. Um, what else here? Yeah, they're going to have a new perspective on why they always ran away from things. Yeah, I feel a major, like, heart-opening energy here. Why the Judgment card? Eight of Pentacles. Ace of Pentacles. Okay. 
Eight of Wands, Ace of Cups, Knight of Cups, Judgment, Eight of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles. Eight of Wands is like very fast moving energy. It could be traveling as well. With the Ace of Cups and Knight of Cups, like you kind of see this, this energy here of like this heart chakra opening. So I feel like they have to do some shadow work and they're going to have these realizations. Um, I feel like they're going to be making judgment calls about uh, with the Eight of Pentacles and the Ace of Pentacles. It's almost like... Like I was talking about, like things that were not manifesting because they were in that kind of illusion of control, like they were in that very narrow minded mentality. And they're going to start recognizing that the more they open up, the more they're going to have true control because they're going to be using their intuition. They're going to be able to see multiple perspectives. They're going to be more open minded. And so I think things are going to be really manifesting that for them there with the eight of pentacles, ace of pentacles, things that they've been working really hard for, things that they've, they've, they've been studying. Um... Yeah, I think it's just a process. I do want to do readings that are more based for you guys. I feel like I feel like for this collective, this energy keeps coming up. And I'm like, I want to <laughs> I want to make sure I get readings that are just for you and just not all about this other person and what they're feeling, what they're thinking. I want to start doing some more self-empowerment reading for, for you, readings for you guys as well. But I feel like the energy just keeps going there because there's so much going on right now. But um I'm going to try to come back on soon with another reading that's more focused on on what's going on with you, not in regards to them. But um, anyway, I hope this helps somebody. I'm going to put this out. Thank you guys for watching.